Good morning, Alex here from the Four Week Natural. Today, this morning, 1st of January 2021, I'm here in Mexico, Playa del Carmen, because we are starting the Four Week Natural here on the 7th of January, about a week from now. However, today, I have a blog for you in the bright sun of Mexico uh, about the fear of loss, fear of loss in your pickup game. Not only the psychology of it, but the process of it, how to make sure that you're doing it on a personal level when you're approaching girls, the way that you can have uh, implications of fear of loss in social context, and how as you become more abundant and more socially competent, you'll seek more abundance and therefore be more skeptical uh, and more a little defensive in the way that you use and manage your social time so that you can automatically and naturally, and this is a natural game that we're talking about, you can naturally communicate a fear of loss and instantly create attraction everywhere that you go. And the reason why I wanna speak about this one today is that so many guys here watching this channel, watching pickup channels, you completely miss the factor of fear of loss because you're very linear thinkers. You know, you think to yourself, I wanna get a girlfriend, I wanna be better in game, I wanna be better at pickup, but you're missing the bigger picture. You're just looking at the one girl trying to create some kind of process that's gonna work for you in a very mathematical fashion, but there needs to be more elements than just you and the girl in order for your attraction to work. So I'm gonna delve deep into this. It's a whole mind dump of notes ready for my mastermind program coming out in 2022. Can't wait for 2022 when everything's gonna be back to normal. Maybe, maybe this year sometime soon. So let's delve into it right here, right now from the beautiful, if I can get a, a pan tilt, from the beautiful Playa Del Carmen. And I'm glad to be here because it was super wintry in Scotland where I just came from. Let us begin. Down here now in the nice Fifth Avenue on uh, in Playa del Carmen. The video today is, it's fear of loss, okay? Fear of loss. And talking to you guys learning about game and pickup if you don't have a whole lot of abundance the way you're thinking about game is gain all right trying to get something that you don't have or trying to get attraction or a new connection with somebody that you haven't yet established that with so you're thinking gain 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 right you're trying to go from nothing to something that party bike coming in behind me get into the get into the groove of it um but what people are actually going to be attracted to what girls are going to be attracted to is is going to be fearing losing you that you are coming at it from a place of abundance and that you're a guy with options and that they could basically lose you at any time you know as you know evolutionarily biologically as guys we're always looking for more okay that's evolutionarily in modern day society we have marriage and monogamy and things like that but in the, in the dating game, a guy with true abundance, he's gonna be looking for lots of options, not just one. Whereas you, the dude who's a little bit scarce or forgetting about creating fear of loss, you're just gonna be hopeful to get one thing and make it work, right? Realize that from the girl's point of view, she's thinking, she's kind of sensing on her radar, if she is talking to a guy and she realizes that it's a little difficult to keep his attention, or that guy is looking for multiple options, or if she's sensing that guy has had a lot of experience and is abundant, then it's going to trigger her radar, trigger her kind of like evolutionary instinctual uh, visceral vibes that this is a dude who's an attractive type of dude because he has options, right? He's the kind of person who, if he was to give a compliment, the compliment is much more meaningful. If that guy was to validate, the validation is much more meaningful because he has had a whole range of life experiences. He has life status. And a compliment is so much more meaningful from somebody who has options than somebody who doesn't, right? So that's why abundance is, is really important. There's like domestic, to, domestic debates going on all around me. Gotta love filming in public. So I can imagine it right now, so many students that I coach on 4 Week Natural and you guys out there in your own game, Tinder, party, nightclub, that when you're you know, going and approaching girls, you have this girl in front of you on the approach or you know, even in your text message vibes coming through the phone and the girl can sense 
that you're trying to get one thing and make one thing work, right? In reality, you need to be keeping your options wide open. Now, the way to reconcile that with like natural game and organic male to female dynamics is that as you get more social experience, more life experience and more maturity and abundance, you're gonna realize, and this is the, the famous quote, I don't know who said it first, maybe I adapted it, but the famous quote is that people are equally as much a dream as they are a nightmare. So here you are trying to prove to yourself that you're not any more scarce and you're looking at a girl that she's only a dream, that she can you know, make your dreams come true and make you happy and solve a big chunk of your life's sadness or problems. But a really abundant person knows that making new friends or having new girlfriends, that is gonna be equally as much a dream as it is a nightmare. So you're going up, approaching girls, and you're just hoping that it works. You, you have the fear of loss, where really the girls should have a fear of loss. But as you evolve, uh, you'll come into congruence and you'll be at one with the idea that every single new person that you meet, friends, colleagues, girls, girlfriends, they can be just as much of a pleasure as they can be a headache, just as much of a dream as they can be a nightmare. And if you carry that reality, that truth, into your pickup interactions, both on Tinder, the way you communicate on Tinder, an online game, as in your real life game, you're gonna start to send and transmit those vibes in the interaction that you have abundance, and you're gonna create fear of loss in the girl you're talking to, rather than you having the fear of loss of losing the girl that you're speaking to, okay? Just imagine, okay, this is the, the preliminary point that I wanna make, is that your vibe is probably completely wrong from the beginning, both from text and on cold approach, because you're forgetting that you need to keep your eyes open and your options open. And just because you've got a kind of a good attraction with one person going on, text or real life, it can all go up in smoke in two seconds flat, okay? And especially if you're not keeping your options open until you've got kind of a commitment or a, you know, a history or an intimacy with one girl, you can lose her at any second, right? So if you keep that in your mind, you're gonna to start to think abundantly and trigger fear of loss in her and in others rather than you feeling the fear of loss yourself, okay? Move away from trying to get one thing and move toward keeping your options open to many things, okay? Let me talk to you about how this works in the actual, the, the 17 steps of night game that we use on the four week natural program uh, to create as many options as possible. Have a look at this this view, this environment, the colors. We are doing uh, Fort Natural Player Del Carmen here, starting in seven days. So there's three positions remaining. You can come and join us, and we do day game here down on the beach and the beach bars, like maybe four days a week, night game four days a week. So especially if you're in the United States or Canada, look at your flights and and come and come and join us because I, for one, am actually really glad to be here. It's uh, brilliant after coming from Scotland. Anyway. Back to, back to the fear of loss. Okay, so let's talk now about how you would do it in, in person at a club or a party. And then let's talk about how you would do fear of loss in text game or Tinder game or Hinge game, something like that. So when, when we're in a club, uh, for everybody, myself included, generally when you go out and you start doing your cold approaches, you're gonna have a little bit of approach anxiety. It happens to me. It's, it's the, the dynamic of like jumping off a diving board for the first time that day. It's like, oh, I don't know if I should do this, but then you do it and you're like, oh, it's totally fine. However, in overcoming your initial approach anxiety for any given day in the club, when you finally you know, open an interaction and you get a set to, to start to work for you, what you'll then do is tend to just be really comfortable in the set that you've opened that, that happens to be working for you, right? So you start talking to a couple of girls, it could be pretty, they could be pretty easy to speak to, but then, essentially you're getting lazy because you like the comfort zone of at least having an interaction that works but if you're just comfortably staying with a girl or a group of girls you're not going to be creating any fear of loss at all now the thing that sets guys with really excellent success with women apart from guys who don't have it is your ability to walk away from interactions early right good old rsd tyler said it in the uh uh, the two hour free audio that he put out. I don't know if you guys remember this from like 2004. 
It's like if any single one of you guys was surprised when I walked in here as the instructor that I'm not good looking enough to be pulling women. Well, he said one of the big attraction methods is the takeaway. It is the takeaway. And by, by you actually, you know, approaching a group of girls early on in a party or a club, and then you actively, you do the takeaway, you're going to trigger a fear of loss and it's going to be good, unpredictable behavior. And the girl is almost going to have a little sense of rejection. Plus, you're just going to be different to every other guy. So this does really help. But the reason why the takeaway and the fear of loss is so important in forming natural game is because when we go to a party or a nightclub and we want to meet uh, new girls is we want to create as many options with different girls as possible it's like a one in a hundred chance that the first chick that you speak to on any night out right out here by the way it's only a one in a hundred chance that it's possible that it could even work out with that girl logistically maybe she's got a boyfriend maybe she's not your type maybe you're not her type whatever so in you doing several approaches and then consciously doing a takeaway and repeating this for four or five interactions, you create three or four possibilities. Maybe you get rejected from two or three of the sets. Uh, maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe they have boyfriends, whatever. But by you doing the takeaway, you can then go around and screen and create more options. But at the same time, you're creating that fear of loss in that girl. So here you are, you're already confident enough to go and do approaches and meet girls and use a range of emotions and conscientiously think about your game and expanding your abundance so that makes you a cool guy to begin with and then you meet the girl it's going smoothly and when it's going smoothly you simply just say hey hey uh, I sense that it's girls night here I'm interrupting I'll let you guys get back to it my bad I'll leave you to it right and I, I personally love that move day game or night game because when you say oh my bad I'm interrupting and you take that step back what what happens is they they get this little uh, kind of like it gives away their poker face because if they like you and they think other guys are creepy in the venue it's so bright out here I can't see they the girl will be like no no oh, I don't want to lose you you're a cool you're a nice guy and the other guys who've been speaking to us before are like creepy over the top gamey or whatever so the takeaway is so important in that sense that you create other options in the club and you create the fear of loss in the girl. However, it, it's a double-edged sword. There's two, there's two sides to this dynamic. When, when you can step away that way, the way that I'm talking about here, when you demonstrate that you're willing to walk away, you're also demonstrating that you're willing to let her go. Okay, You're willing to let her go. So this is a, a deeper inner reflection of inner game because you're saying, hey, I'm confident enough to walk away from a good thing going on here because I anticipate that I can create another good thing, another good possible opportunity to have a conversation, interaction, relationship and, intim and intimacy with somebody else. So that takes real balls and real strength in a way that most guys don't have that, especially as I said, most of the guys watching this, you're coming at this from a place of scarcity and it wouldn't even occur to you to walk away, but you gotta realize that walking away, willing, be willing to let the girl walk away, willing to lose the girl, that shows kind of a strength and abundance that she instantly recognized that kind of like starts to vibrate on her radar. Shit, this guy has options. I wanna be getting positive attention by a guy who has options. I'll, the girl wants to be getting positive attention from a guy who has abundance and authority and social contextual uh, importance and influence. Okay, you can be that guy simply by walking away, but it really scares people, all right? It's, it's like gambling. Imagine, you know, you take your week's wage, your week's earning, it could be $1,000, $500, some pesos in Mexico. You take your $1,000 at the end of the week and you're like, ah, fuck it. I'm just gonna put it down in the casino, put it on black. I'm willing to lose it, right? Now, you know, if you've got a, a salary, you're gonna get another $1,000 that week, the next week anyway. Right? So you're willing to lose it. You've got an abundance of finance, so you're willing to take that risk. And that, you know, financially, it's not an intelligent decision, but emotionally, that's the, the metaphor and the equivalent that we're talking about here. So if you can do that, then you're really gonna stand out from other guys. You're gonna show that strength. And in, in taking my advice and adhering to the ideas in this video, you're gonna start to internalize that you're willing to lose interactions, walk away, and start to internalize that strength.
okay? Most of the time, if you're an inexperienced, scarce guy and you're trying to get reactions and results in the club, most of the time you're gonna go home from a club alone. Most of the time, even me. I'll always walk out of the door of the club with the girl, but I won't always be able to get the girl that night, right? That's just normal. So at least this way you can follow proper process and due course and internalize strength, right? Internalize in strength of willing to let the girl go for you to walk away. Uh, so that you get stronger and stronger each time. Now, to just to continue and finish out, finish out the idea behind that process, I do want you to be able to do five approaches at the start of the night, five different groups, do some screening, do your takeaway, create the fear of loss, and then make a, 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 a learned decision about which girl you want to follow through, which girl and her group of friends do you want to spend the entire night with, right? When the wet floor comes, the wet floor point comes, you want to find that girl, stick with her, give her a big compliment, qualify her, neck her a little bit, uh, offer to buy a couple of rounds of drinks, as in you buy one, she buys one, and then dance the night away and get that front door right. That's just how the process works, it's important. But uh, that's how it would work procedurally in night game. Now let's talk about it during Tinder game and text game and a little bit kind of like Instagram game as well. I'm doing some of the most lazy videography here. Tripod, same position, just rotate it around for this other, another incredible, beautiful view. I just, it's such a pleasure to work down here. Now, all right, text game, text game, Tinder game, Instagram game, stuff like that. When, when we're on 4-Week Natural, uh, and we've been doing this since 2016, when we're on 4-Week Natural, I teach you a whole lot about uh, Tinder game, Bumble game, and text game, both from your Tinder leads and your cold approach leads. So. When I'm, you know, with every single student, up to nine of them, when we do a day game session, I catch up on their texts and I review the texts that they've sent and I will then take over and send the texts with them. Okay, so I'll do the texting for you because, you know, with text game, there are so many random variables, uh, age, situation, status, logistics, uh, how attractive she is, do you have any things in common, things like that. So it's quite hard for any, any pickup coach to teach you text game from the top down. But when I'm working with you over the course of five weeks and following through all of your text message threads, I get to know you, I get to know the girl. Oh, water's coming. Uh, and I can follow through the interaction with you. So it's very hands-on, live, interactive text coaching that adheres to all of the random variability that happens with any text interaction. So. What I always notice when I'm coaching six guys or nine guys at a time, got some guys with walkie talkies surrounding me here. Um, what I notice is, you know, obviously guys, when they finally get a good interaction happening on Tinder or, you know, they get a day game phone number, they, they play it so safe. They're texting so safe, which, you know, obviously if you've got a good thing going, the girl is kind of cute, you value the girl, all of a sudden you, you start texting like you never wanna lose the girl and that makes complete sense. I wouldn't wanna lose a good thing either, but this is Tinder, this is life. You can't control if you can keep a girl forever. You can't control that you're, you can't assure or guarantee that you're going to get uh, to meet up with a girl from Tinder or Bumble or whatever. And that makes your text game so boring, right? So boring. So when I'm, when I'm reviewing all the students text game, I can see that when they have an opportunity to be fun or funny or silly or expressive or even a little bit risky in their conversation, they don't go for it because they want to keep things safe. But the kind of guys who are on Tinder because they want to recruit girls to nightclubs or uh, they really do have an, uh, like an immense abundance, they text almost dismissively. Uh, and as I said before, that great takeaway from this video is every new person that you meet is gonna be both a dream and a nightmare. They're gonna be both a pleasure and a headache. Whereas you guys, guys with uh, scarcity, do tend to forget that. So you need to be able to text in a way that 
honestly, I assume that I'm never gonna meet up with a girl. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. This is not gonna go anywhere. So let's have fun with it not going anywhere. And even if you and the girl do really like each other, logistically, it can be quite hard to meet up with somebody from Tinder, Bumble or whatever. So just as long as you're allowed to layer in your skepticism, kind of, kind of find out why that girl may qualify for you in an interviewer type of mode, right? So you're texting and saying things like, oh no, are you the kind of girl who, is, who, who can't organize more than one thing a day? Oh no, you're a girl, you probably lost your phone this week so you don't know how to reply back. Or that's all right, you're a girl, you're indecisive, I'll meet you next, next year, all right? Let's text for one year and then you'll finally get everything together and I'll meet you next year. Those kind of disqualifiers, uh, which don't need to be aggressive or unpleasant, but it's just kind of like, oh my God, you can't keep up. I like you, but what's the catch? One of the things that we often talk about is we say, um, you're on Tinder, uh, you're, you are on Tinder. If my friends asked, why are you single? What should I tell them? And all of, all of like already you're disqualifying them and saying, hey, what's the catch here? What do I need to know about you? That's a bit of a problem. And then you get to talking and you kind of like, you want to iron out a couple of things like, hey, you're not on Tinder because you want to marry me, right? You're disqualifying her. You're, are you on Tinder because you want me to, uh, because you want my wallet and you hold up a photo of your wallet or say, hey, broke student or whatever. So disqualify her in these ways um, and then qualify her based on that. But in those one-on-one -on -one conversations, there needs to be that disqualification in, in order to then qualify. It's not enough that you just match each other and you know, happy days. The girl needs to know that you are a little selective, that you're willing to walk away, that you're instilling in her a fear of loss. And then she kind of gets a chance at you, right? Furthermore, as you become more abundant, we, we have this concept in 4 Natural called abundant saturation, that you're creating multiple leads with multiple different girls, both day game, night game, uh, text game. And it's almost like you can't keep up with both your career, your gym, your friends, and your new leads. So that automatically uh, and naturally tends to appear like you can't keep up with texting that girl, right? So you're not too eager to text back. You're not sitting around and waiting. If you don't take anything else, anything else from this video and this series of ideas, when you've got a good thing going on with one girl, immediately try to get a good thing going on with a second girl, right? That is going to help to guard against you not creating a fear of loss with the way that you, the, with the way that you talk to girls. So, I might do a bit more lazy videography and turn the camera in a different direction and we'll go on to the next points. On that topic of fear of loss, as you get into relationships uh, and you, you know, have more women in your life or you know, one really uh, significant other, that person is then gonna wanna have ongoing uh, reassurance. And that's pretty normal, you know, that's, your strength is one of the things that makes you attractive as a gentleman. Oh, police, I think. The police here have pretty cool cars. That's one of the things that makes you really attractive as a gentleman. And the people around you, you know, it could be your staff, your children, your partner, they are gonna want uh, continual reassurance that they are still of value to you. And that's one of the things that you offer, you know, as you develop your own strength in life, as I walk through this construction zone, um, that you can then empower others and kind of validate them and encourage them and reassure them to bring the best out in them. And that's one of the roles that we play uh, as guys. We, we extend our strength um, and affection onto others, but you will need to continually do that all throughout your life. So those two things can coexist, that you can instill a fear of loss or even a fear of inferiority in others, you know, because you're striving to be the best you that you can be but at the same time continually bring other people up, encourage them, reassure them, show that you believe in them, and the cycle just continues to go on. You, you will continue to get stronger, and you should be able to continue to make others around you strong as well. This uh, selfie mode actually works pretty well. Just living my Mexican life. Little tour down here, say hello to the beach, and then on to the next location. So this is how it would, how it would look. Hmm. I'm not unhappy with that. 
selfie walking backwards mode. Do you have the forearm strength for it? That's the, that's the question. So we're going down to the beach here. Whoa! <laughs> Gonna go into ball head, gave out, but now I can lead you down to the beach. And it kind of works, good enough. It is a true privilege to be able to do this job in places like this and be able to pick the season that we want to do this in. But of course, uh, when running these programs, we, we do try to chase the tourism seasons and the busy seasons. So try to get away from the winter in North America and Canada and Europe. Anyway, let's wrap this video up. Let me give you the last kind of notes that I had about fear of loss uh, written down on my notepad here in preparation for the uh, uh, Four Week Natural Mastermind program coming out in 2022. A 60 week lead up to it. So, there's a good crossover in, in gaming and creating fear of loss. You know, when we speak about uh, negging or a range of emotions or push pull or things like that, that's the same as you guys being playful and playfully disqualifying, pushing away, or even teasing that you might go for a different girl or maybe playfully saying that she's turning you gay or something like that so that that's called theatricism and I know that a lot of you guys you know if you're in that scarcity mindset and you you want to be more dynamic and more naturally attractive you need to initiate theatrical playful negative range of emotion which lines up with what we're talking about here which is pushing away okay creating that fear of loss I further want to remind you that we live in a social world we as guys, especially as we, we turn 25 and we go through the middle stage of our life and the, the older stage of our life, we are okay to live a little bit more autonomously and in isolation, but that's not the case for girls at all. They are far more social. They spend a lot more time with their friends, family, mother, sister, co-workers, and that social belonging and that social relevance and context, it's so much more important and relevant to girls than it is to guys. And so just by you walking over and offering yourself and saying hi i've got a good job i've got a good body i'm socially confident i can make you laugh that's not enough right that's not enough to trigger the fear of loss you're just offering all these new things but people are not motivated by gain as we know people are motivated by fear of loss right so you need to put yourself in context and that girl needs to know that you have a social place right that you're competent within a context that you've got your friends that you fit in with the family and that if you were to you know, hang out with her and her friends or her and her social circle, that you would be, that one, that you would fit in and two, that you would have your place. And she would worry a little bit about losing your attention to other people because, not because you're you know, a player or a douchebag, but you are a fair person and you want to give everybody a chance. You know, that's the trait of a good leader. You want to be able to give everybody a chance, have a conversation with anybody, appreciate anybody from a position of authority, downwardly connect, all that good stuff. It's like those scenes in wedding crashes where the the crashes don't just hone in on the girls that they want to go for they they also speak to grandma and the niece and the nephew and the the brother and the uncle and all that kind of thing so that's so relevant and su such an important thing that so many of you guys miss in your your game and your pickup by the way the cigars here cuba's just across the water over there so they're good and they're cheap and they're brilliant it'll be cool here because on before we natural we'll be able to sit down have these cheap cigars together and go over our debriefs, personal consultations and one-on-ones, all while enjoying high quality cigars uh, and having these long conversations. It's very relaxing and to be indulged maybe once in a while in a place where they're pretty cheap. To further that point, it often surprises me, you know, being a dating coach, a single guy in my 30s, confident and outgoing, and I might meet a girl from Tinder or Nomad Soulmates or whatever it might be, and we spend all this time together, but it takes a while for that girl to wake up and realize the value that I have. They're like, oh, you know, guys normally like me. It doesn't make, it, it, there's no difference that this guy, Alex, likes me as well. It just takes them a while to wake up. It's only when they, they realize they might lose me and my attention to somebody else that they actually wake up and think, shit, I'm gonna, I need to go on a date with this guy. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, agree to go home with him. I'm gonna start becoming intimate with that guy because he is interested in that. If I, if I don't do it, then this guy's gonna go for somebody else. 
Alex is gonna take her out for drinks, gonna make her feel special, gonna have a fun theatrical roller coaster of emotions, which is what girls are looking for, which they love. And in the story of their own romantic mind, they kind of get chosen by the important guy within the context. But me as the guy, you as the guy, you need to create that context and make keep other people involved. You know, even in a nightclub scene or a party scene, don't just camp on one girl all night. Try to involve other girls and guys. And don't be afraid to invite other guys in as well. Because, you know, when you put yourself next to another guy, she's going to fear losing you and be stuck with a lesser type of guy. In fact, in my case here, that's that's been the case. It's not as many dynamic Australian guys in Playa del Carmen at the moment. So that it's a huge advantage when I involve other guys in the interaction as well. Let's shoot into the bright sun for this last little note here. On an almost really advanced game type of note, my friends who I'm in all my WhatsApp group chats with, the other pickup coaches, these guys are so abundant that they're almost kind of fed up with the silliness and immaturity of some of the girls that they're dating and some of the experiences that, that they've had with marriage and fiancés, relationships, living with girlfriends in the past. So it's th these guys, and I guess myself included, are super skeptical of the girl from the very beginning. And it's very hard for us guys to warm up. So the girl kind of senses that she can't even keep our attention to begin with. Now, of course, we're attracted to beauty and girls of status. And if we're meeting girls in the types of parties and clubs that we're going to, we know that they must be pretty cool and there must be something good to that girl and her personality and her career and her values and her spirituality, all that good stuff. But after you've had so much success, well, experience with women, eventually you get really, really skeptical. Okay? And you, we as guys need to work hard to overcome that. Now, that relates to the average guy out there who you might be kind of jaded or upset or annoyed with chicks. You have to wake up and give them a chance. Okay. But realize that that skepticism you have towards women that's built in because of bad experience or an abundance of good experiences, if you make the effort, take the initiative and try to see the good in others, you'll find the good in others. And that's what drives the game naturally. You know, attraction equals high value or, you know, you striving to be a leader and then adding a range of emotions. And you can do that both consciously or naturally depending on how evolved along in this game you are, okay? So, fear of loss. And cigars down here on the beach. This video is going out today, filmed on the 2nd of January, released on the 2nd of January, and we're starting down here on the 7th, on the 7th of January, so just a couple of days from now. Oh look, we've got a man up there in the, in the sky. And uh, well, I announced this today relatively last minute. Let's get a little angle change here. I announced this program very last minute because of the situation in Europe and because of the situation uh, in North America. But this is open and a lot of Americans are here, Canadians and Europeans, and this allows me to run the program that so many students have been waiting for now for about 18 months. I had to put programs back by six months. So I made this program, quickly got six signups, so we have three places remaining, right? And one thing that many people don't know about Four Week Natural when I speak to them about it is that once you do the first Four Week Natural and you're well-trained, you're welcome to come for free on any programs again after that, right? You're allowed to come and join in. And what's quite cool is here, I'll be training the six to nine students that we have sign up, but I'm gonna be having these guys coming in to visit from Chicago, Toronto, Texas. And to me, they're like brothers or graduates. They know what's going on. They help with the students. Um, and it's just fun to have that community. And it's very rare, you know, you guys out there, your friends might have girlfriends, your friends might not like going out. One of the best things about Four Week Natural is becoming a part of a crew of like-minded, ambitious guys who are humble enough to learn about themselves, to make mistakes, and to have an adventure. So the whole group dynamic of six to 10 guys, with me as the fearless leader and expert psychologist, walking you through it. And imagine, you finish here in Playa del Carmen, and then I actually am gonna start another program in the United States a week later. And then once that one's finished, another program a week later after that. And right now, we're actually thinking about Playa del Carmen here for the 33 days, then Miami for 33 days in the model season, and then Texas in the South by Southwest phase of time in March and April type of thing. So it's gonna be brilliant. It's gonna be North America for the next three months. And just so you know, if you come down here, it's actually a little bit cheaper because it's a tourist destination. It's a 
digital nomad type destination and it's a little bit last minute and that allows you access then to go to Miami and Austin or whatever combination of programs that I decide to do. So Alex here from Four Week Natural. Mmm, cigars, mojitos, videography, really enjoying it and I can't wait to see my team down here in Playa del Carmen and I'll see all of you guys online for the next video. In fact, I wanted to ask you in the comments below, in the comments below, I want you to question the content of this vlog. What more do you want to know or have clarified about fear of loss? Let me, please, give me a bit of like market feedback. What part of fear of loss are you missing the most? Okay, what, what part of your game have I identified that is not currently working for you in your game? And the next thing I want to know, okay, option for the next video. Do you want me to speak about strengths? Strengths, the type of skills that can't be taught or do you want me to speak more about deep personality compliments? So using a positive range of emotions, teaching on deep, touching on uh, deep personality traits that are very that help you to really emotionally connect with others and subordinates and people that you are gaming, dating, or working with. Cool, Alex from the.